Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church. It's great to be with you. I hope you've had a wonderful day and avoiding some of the rain here in Western Kentucky. It is Compline Night Prayer, and we are celebrating it within the Episcopal tradition, which is very common for most of our liturgical traditions. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence on this 14th day of January. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 14, found on page 598 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 598, Psalm 14. Please join me in reading and reciting this beautiful psalm together or in the silence of your own meditation. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone who has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up all people like bread and do not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance come out of Zion, when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice, and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. A leper came to meet Jesus, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose to make me clean, moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I do choose. He made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, to, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for a cleansing that what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into that town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight, as we listen to this passage and also for the Psalm 14, it almost gives you a kind of a dark 
darkness of what Jesus is about and God has maybe abandoned us. But the reality is, is that God has not abandoned us, but he is trying to help us relate to us. God knows that we are in difficult times. He knows that many of us have seen difficult times from things from maybe getting diagnosed with cancer to an upheaval with an ice storm or unfortunately with our government going through its upheaval. Our own personal lives going through a pandemic are just very similar to that. Jesus is re reminding us that we need to just ask God for help in right direction. Help us to know that even in our pain and suffering sometimes, our mental anguish, God is there for us and he's there to help us see us through these times because he is the light in the darkness. He helps us see our way. He gave us the Holy Spirit. And so as we go to bed tonight, know that just by touching and praying and taking a moment and asking God for right direction as you sleep so that you might have a peaceful sleep or to be able to awaken once again tomorrow and maybe change something, maybe that maybe you addressed with a person you work with or your partner, your children, whatever it might be, there is a time when we can correct those things that maybe we are ashamed of and maybe things that we could have done better. God loves each and every one of us, just as he loved that leper and wanted him to know freedom, even to do what he didn't ask him to do. God loves you. Amen. We continue our prayers on page 132 at the bottom, page 132. Into your hands, O, God, o Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> and together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Tonight, we'll use the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Lord, let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this night on page 133. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne and illumine this night with your celestial brightness that, that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And to continue our prayers, please Turn with me to page 389 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 389. Prayers of the people form five. If you'd please join me in our prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with true truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Terry, our bishop, and maybe your bishop or your superior, wherever you are in your faith community. For all of our bishops and other ministers, and for all of all holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the mission of the church that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace of the world, that our spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, Donald Trump, our president. For Joseph Biden, our president-elect. For all of our elected officials, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, both virtually, and for those who are absent, especially those who are distant from us, for your faith community, wherever you might be, I would like to pray for the people of Grace Episcopal Church here in Paducah, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We commend to you all who have themselves and are in our prayers for our families and friends and neighbors that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. I'd like to especially pray for all those over 4,000 people that were diagnosed today with COVID-19 in our Commonwealth, and especially in our own county here in McCracken County of 51 people. I'd like to pray for Barbara and Don Evans and Andrew Durham as they continue to recover from uh, the COVID uh, virus, for Peggy and Sophie Henney. We pray, Lord, for all those who are recovering from surgeries or other illnesses or per, per, uh, preparing for uh, different diagnoses. I'd like to pray for Phil Counts, for Betty Schubert. I pray for George Chalk. I'd like to pray for Gary Gray, for his tests. For my sister, Mary Jo Hartung. I pray for all those who are suffering today, for those who are suffering from other illnesses or anxiety, as I mentioned before. I pray for those with cancer, especially Jim Zelmer, for Mother Libby Wade, for Patty and Tommy. I pray for all those who are undergoing treatments. We pray for the congregations of St. Peter's of the Lake, St. John's in Murray, Grace Church in Hopkinsville, St. Mary's in Madisonville, for all Episcopal College ministers. We pray for all assisted living and nursing facilities, especially for Gaither Suites, for Rivercrest, the Lakes, Park Crest, and Heritage Manor. We pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for the vaccine and many who are being vaccinated. I pray, Lord, for all those who we love and hold, cherish, and dear to us. Lord, O oh Lord, our God, hear, O oh Lord, our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and to one another and to all our life to Christ, our God. We pray, Lord, for all those who have lost their lives today and especially their families who mourn their losses, especially the 51 people in our in our commonwealth that passed away because of the coronavirus. And I'd also like to remember, especially this evening, a dear friend of mine and colleague here in Paducah, Pastor Don Rausch, pastor of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, who passed away today of a sudden heart attack. I pray for the people of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. Pray for his partner, Tony and for his brother, Dan. 
and for all of our loved ones who we mourn. We pause for a moment and remember them at this time. O oh Lord, to you we lift up our prayers for them. May the light perpetually shine upon their souls. Lord, have mercy. And to you, O oh Lord, our God. And to celebrate, we pray, yours is the majesty, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And together, let us continue in our prayers on page 134 at the bottom. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us, and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you had a prayerful time as I much as I enjoy giving uh, this time for you and leading this time of prayer. Know that you can lead prayer in your own time, in your own place, wherever you might be. God is with us, and he is amazing. I hope you have a restful sleep tonight. I hope you can join me again tomorrow for our noonday prayer once again and uh, at noon, and then right back here again at 9 p.m. Uh, for tomorrow night's Compline prayer. Remember that God loves you, and so do I. Have a wonderful sleep, and with sweet dreams. Good night.